Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here and thank you very much for tuning in today. In today's video I will be working on my daughter's 2004 Honda Element and specifically there's an issue that's come up recently where when it goes to shift into third gear there's like this hesitation there's there's an issue with the transmission shifting into third gear. Check this out. All right here's the problem. Start off first gear, medium throttle, second gear, And it just it worked fine that time. But usually going into third gear is where I'll get a flare. It'll and then go into gear. Maybe I can get it to do it after it warms up a bit more. All right, let's try this again. First gear. Second gear. There it is. That's what I'm after. There's a little flare before it goes into third gear that wasn't there before. It's something that's fairly recent. And it's something that I believe is caused by the uh, shift solenoid on the outside of the transmission. All right, here we go again. First gear. Second gear. Come on. <laughs> Didn't do it that time. So it's intermittent. First gear. There it is. It did it that time. It was just kind of like, what am I doing? So that's what we're trying to fix. Before I got to this point, the first thing I did was change the transmission fluid. And I just wanted to do that for my own peace of mind, but it's something I suggest you do if you're having a shifting problem on your Honda automatic transmission. And I would recommend only using Honda fluid, or I've recently found out, I believe Indemetsu is the original equipment supplier for Honda automatic transmission. You might be able to find that a little bit cheaper. Anyway, it's also important that you only check the level when the engine is warm and off, not running. Don't don't check the automatic transmission fluid while it's running, you won't get the fluid level correct. Once you're sure you have good fluid and the fluid level is correct, I went out and took the test drive and you saw what happened. We were still having the problem. First, let's talk a little bit about Honda automatic transmissions. Now, Honda automatic transmissions are somewhat unique in that they've taken a manual transmission and put automatic controls on it. So it's a little different than the planetary gear setups you see in a lot of automatic transmissions. As such, the shift the transmission with electronic solenoids on the outside of the transmission, which are accessible, and sometimes they can have a problem, which I suspect is what's going on with this vehicle. So we're gonna change out the AB solenoid on the front of this transmission, which I believe will address the problem that we're having. To do that, I'm gonna to need to remove the battery and maybe some air intake stuff here. As mentioned, I'm gonna start by removing the battery. Now, if you have an original equipment radio, make sure you have the radio code before you do this because you will need it to activate your radio once you have the battery reconnected. I start by disconnecting the ground. Well, not tightening it, disconnecting it. First off, last on with the ground. There's just a couple of hooks. Get the hold down out. Take the battery and the cover and everything. Well, covers plural. There's a, there's a couple there. And now, if I can, I would love to get this battery tray out of the way. How successful I'll be with that, well, we're about to find out. I started by undoing the hood prop and using my other hood prop here. Uh, that way I don't have to fight around it while I'm working in this area. I'm gonna start by getting these wires off of here. They're clipped on. WD-40 does help with their removal. I can work around this battery tray, but I'd rather not. Kinda looks like that ground cable could use some help. Maybe we'll address that while we're in here. Now the two hardest ones other ones down on the side, and they are 12 millimeter. That was surprisingly easy. Two more right here, and I think we're done. I missed one. There's one more on the side here.
Okay, that first fastener I loosened just needed to be loosened because it's not fully held in like this one is. This is the solenoid pack that I'm after. It's on the front. It's shift, sol shift solenoids A and B. It's held on by six fasteners on the front of the transmission. You'll see two there at the top. There are two in the middle and there are two more on the bottom. Uh, I also intend to address this uh, ground cable, but first let's uh, see if my theory with this solenoid assembly will work. All right, first I'm gonna start by un... I don't know what that was. First I'm gonna start by unplugging it. Two plugs. Should be ours. There'll be some fluid that comes out, so you might wanna have something underneath it to catch that. Sweet, the gasket stayed intact. What I had hoped for isn't gonna to come to pass. I was under the assumption that the AV solenoid on Hondas were all the same, whether it's on a V6 or a four cylinder. I'm incorrect in that assessment. This came off of a V6 transmission. This came off of the transmission that we were just working on. As you can see, they're clearly different. So I am gonna to have to get a solenoid assembly, I believe. But before we go there, let's do some testing on this to see if it can reveal any of its secrets into, as to possibly why it's got delayed engagement in third gear. I'll just start with a couple simple resistance checks. So my leads have a little bit of resistance in them. 6.2. Also about the same resistance, maybe a little less, 6.2, 6.3. Just for the heck of it, let's try these. Let's see if it's similar. Maybe a little less resistance. They do appear to be smaller solenoids, so that kind of makes sense. As far as resistance goes, there's nothing that says, wow, oh, this one's bad. I mean, a visual inspection shows that there is some corrosion happening around this one. But I suppose we could try one more thing, and that is uh, just activating them and get a 12 volt source and just activate these. Somebody just happened to leave a battery here. Uh, I just looked at the uh, sticker on the element and it's actually a 2003 and not a 2004. And that may be important because when I looked up the parts for this, it came up with this solenoid. Uh, but I looked it up for a 2004, so it may be that the 2003 is slightly different with these solenoids, and that may be what the issue is. Now, solenoids aren't necessarily uh, polarity specific, so I should be able to come in here, add power and ground, they're 12 volt solenoids, add power and ground, and watch them activate. So here it is. Ooh, <laughs> it's squirting stuff out, so it works. Quite well, in fact. I don't know if you can see that moving up there. So that's what's happening when the uh, computer is shifting the transmission. Let's do it again on the other one. <laughs> you get a shot of transmission fluid out of this. Be aware. Again, seems to be moving fine. So nothing about this says bad solenoid. What I'm concerned about or thinking is that there's some laziness happening here. Like there's some, something that's getting worn and the engagement isn't working because if the problem isn't here, then it's inside the transmission and that wouldn't be good because that would mean more parts inside the transmission. And given the complexity of going in and just replacing a couple of parts, you might as well just throw a remanufactured one in it with a warranty and be done with it. At least that's my thinking. Anyhow, I'm gonna see what I can do to source this and maybe look around to see if I can find maybe other issues uh, on the transmission. Maybe there's a little bit of gook or something in there that's causing this issue. These transmissions also have a filter down in the front, uh, just behind the radiator that can be changed. And given the looks of mine, it's probably not a bad idea to change it. All right, I'm gonna reinstall this guy and then see, take it on a test drive. I don't know if my activation on the bench might have cleared out some gook. I'm hoping for that. A 
before I put it completely back together, let's address this ground cable issue. I've actually covered this in another video, so I'm not gonna get into detail on it now. We'll just show you the finished result, which, let's see, how many strands are left? Half the ground cable is gone. Maybe more if you count this corrosion. Move, move, move. That's basically disintegrating. This could also contribute to the problem, so addressing this is not a bad thing at all. I like that a lot better than what was on there. Like so much better. No more corrosion. And actually this is a larger cable. Fun fact, this is the cable that came off of the pilot. I just cut out the bad part and used what was still good on here. New ground cable, let's go for a ride. All right, let's see if what we did made any difference at all. I'll tell you what, it started up easier. First, second. Nah, it's still, still doing it. But I can say, like I said, when I cranked it over, it usually was like a little more effort. It was like, uh, okay, I'm starting. Now it was just like, okay, let's start. Anyway, good ground meets good electricity. Things start up better. Let's give it another try. First gear. Second. There it is, Buh, third. It's actually more definitive now, weirdly. Like it's more pronounced. I don't know if that's because it's a little warmer. Not sure. But it's definitely still there, I haven't fixed it. This is what I'm talking about, it starts up easier. It's like boom, ready to go. Whereas before it seemed a little bit sluggish. So I know that ground cable made a difference, but obviously it didn't fix the problem. We got some more work to do. Check this out viewers. I have a new to me uh, solenoid set. I got it off of eBay, it's used. Uh, it was a third of the price of what you could buy these things for new, which is a couple hundred bucks. I actually felt used parts would be just fine on this. In fact, I could buy three of these uh, for the price of one new one, and they're not that difficult to replace. You can do it from up top. You take out this battery tray, you got no issues. In fact, you don't have to take it out, but I also replaced the transmission filter, which you can see right there. That was a little more challenging from up here, and with the battery tray in the way, I, I don't think it could have happened. Uh, the hose clamps were honestly the most challenging part. Uh, the new filter, the part number should be on your screen right now. Uh, but one thing that I can share with you that is probably helpful, it's really only held on by two 10 millimeter fasteners aside from getting the clamps loose. What I would recommend is removing the entire assembly, which is uh, the lower 10 millimeter fastener and the bracket and everything comes with the filter. You could take it all out as one piece and then you could reinstall it as one piece. I didn't do it that way and I already had the back hose clamp hooked up, which for me at this angle was very challenging. Anyway, I got that hooked up before I discovered that I could have probably put the bracket and everything on before it went down in there, but I hope that saves you some time. Anyway, brackets installed, new transmission filters installed, and by the way, to keep things from leaking out everywhere, I put a couple of vice grips with hose, uh, well, pieces of hose on the ends of them. I use these to basically hold the fluid back. So in other words, I pinch the hoses with this. It doesn't damage them, but with old hoses like this, you kind of got to be careful because, well, they're old. And when I was done, I just sort of squeezed them and massaged them back into shape. I don't anticipate any leaks or anything. Anyway, that filter's installed, the solenoid set's installed. I'm gonna reinstall this battery and we'll take it for a test drive and see what we got. One more thing before I completely button things up. And uh, that is, I don't remember if I showed you my ground cable repair. I used a brass terminal end, not those lead pieces of junk. These brass things, at least in my experience, are a lot better. So that's my new battery terminal. And then I put a new lug on the end down there. And yeah, I probably could have put a piece of shrink tube there, but uh, I'm fine with it the way it is. It's worlds away from what it was with the like three strands that were left that were actually working as a ground. And uh, since I've been driving it, I do notice that it starts up better. Anyway, let's get the battery in and go for a test drive. Before I went for the test drive, I started it up and looked underneath for any leaks, didn't see anything and felt I was good to go. Okay. <laughs> Driveway's a little bumpy today. All right. I think that's first gear, but that might be second. Boom. 
smooth. That was the two, three shift that was hesitating, hanging up, whatever you want to call it. It's not doing that anymore. Yay. I fixed it. Yay, I fixed it. <laughs> I'm always happy when I fix it. All right, first. Second, very smooth. Third, super smooth. Like, you could barely tell it shifted. Solenoids for the win. Fixed it. Love it. One more time. First gear. Second. Third. Like butter. Now, when I get this back to the shop, now that it's all warmed up and at operating temperature, I'm gonna check the transmission fluid level and top off as it's needed. I did lose a little bit during that whole process. I don't think a whole lot, but I just wanna make sure that the transmission fluid level is correct. If you're the curious type like me, you're like, hey, well, how come this solenoid went bad? Everything on it tested good, it worked and everything. What's going on with it? Well, I suspect that maybe the plunger wasn't working properly, either because maybe the windings are starting to go bad inside the solenoid, or because there could be some obstruction. And looking at the ends of these, it looks like I can remove these plugs and possibly pull these valves out and get a look at them. So why don't we do that? These are plastic magnetic things. I will link them in the description. Huh. This could be a special fastener. It is a special fastener. Check it out, it's five sides. I haven't seen a fastener like that, so they don't want you messing with it. Um, I may still be able to get this out of here, but I don't know how helpful that will be to you without the tool to reinstall this because, well, what I'm about to do may damage this for good. But we don't care because we know this part is bad. Yeah, it's never gonna happen. That's not metal, it's other. Yeah, I don't think repair of these is gonna happen. But the one I got off of eBay was only about 50 bucks, so. But Eric, we wanna see the inside of something. Let's cut the transmission filter open. Look inside that. I'm using the body saw because, well, if I use a cutoff wheel, transmission fluid is flammable. This makes less sparks than the cutoff wheel does. see what secrets you hide. Actually, this looks almost identical to the filters that they uh, use in the later Model J series. It looks like there's a lot of gunk in there, but that may be misleading uh, because the saw, you can see where the saw was cutting into that. So I'm not sad about changing it at all. But most of the stuff that's in there is likely from when I cut it open. Now there is one important thing about these. The original equipment filters have a bypass valve in them, which I believe is up in here. Uh, but the aftermarket ones do not. So I don't recommend the aftermarket ones. Spend a little bit of extra money. This was about 40 bucks. I got it from the dealer. Uh, so if you are going to change the transmission fluid or change the transmission filter, in one of these vehicles, I recommend original equipment. I hope the information in this video was useful to you, especially if you're having shifting problems on your Honda automatic transmission. Now, I was reasonably certain that solenoids were gonna solve the problem on this vehicle. I've owned it since 2007, and I've been driving it, well, I put quite a few miles on it since then, and, and before I gave it to my daughter last year. However, it sat for about a month, or maybe even more, before we started using it again, and that's when this problem cropped up. So that led me to believe that it wasn't necessarily an internal problem inside of the transmission that I was looking at, more like something like these solenoids, which are somewhat common. Now, if you have a four cylinder with an automatic transmission, this is, well, I'm not gonna say probably, well, it, there's a high probability that this is gonna solve your shifting problem. However, if you have a, a, trans, a V6 Honda automatic transmission, that might be a different story. Those guys have lots of lots of problems. I replace more of those than I can possibly count. So if you have a transmission problem on a Honda V6 automatic transmission, well, you might be in for a little more than just replacing solenoids. Who knows, you might get lucky. Now, as far as testing those solenoids, as you saw, those solenoids tested good. Resistance checks on electronic components, things like solenoids for me, are kind of like compression tests on engines. They can give you a good 
idea of where there's a big problem, but they can't really tell you anything specific. Uh, and in this case, if you wanted to know what was going on with these solenoids, which I think one of them was just getting kind of lazy, the electromagnet wasn't working as well, and it got kind of slow, I think that might have been the problem over some kind of mechanical issue with the valve. My point is, the only way to really see that is when it's under load. If you want to go through that trouble, great, but if it's a four-cylinder automatic like this one is, I'd say grab a set of solenoids from the salvage yard, put them on there and see what happens. These were about 50 bucks, but they're about 200 bucks new from Honda. So if you're really into the OE and you have to have new stuff, well, it might set you back a little bit. I'll put those part numbers down in the description. Now I got lucky when I removed my solenoid because the gasket stayed on there and it was still intact. So I just reused the gasket. I'll put a link in the description to the gasket, which they do sell separately if you need it and you want to go with a used part like I did. I'll also put a link in the description to that transmission filter. And by the way, uh, only use Honda automatic transmission fluid or I recently found out you can use Indemetsu, which I believe is the original equipment supplier for Honda automatic transmission fluid. I'll link that stuff down in the description along with, well, additional information, additional videos about Honda elements, all kinds of stuff. So if you have questions, check down in the description for additional information, including a link to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you go if you have automotive questions. Aside from that, keep in mind I post videos on Friday, so be sure to stop back and see me then. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll see you next time. Oh.